Hey everybody, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in a Coffin. Thanks for checking out this video, I really appreciate it. If you're new here, I take the on-screen kills in horror movies, and I rate the decisions made by the victim using a scale of Nails in a Coffin. One nail means the victim did something stupid like running upstairs instead of running outside. And I go up to four nails. Four nails is when the victim fought really hard not to get killed, or something like they sacrificed themselves to save others. So... Do me a favor, if you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button, and I'll have a link up here to a bunch of other videos I've covered on this channel. We're 11 movies in now with Friday the 13th franchise, and this is the battle everybody's been waiting for as we get Nightmare on Elm Street's Freddy Krueger <laughs> versus Crystal Lake's Jason Voorhees. Um, here's a summary of the average nails in a coffin for all the movies I've covered so far. This movie takes place before Jason X, so the last time we saw Jason in this universe, he was dragged down to hell. Fans waited 10 years to get this showdown after we saw, at the end of Jason Goes to Hell, Freddy's glove pulling Jason's mask down into hell. There are a good number of kills in this movie, and there's also like a fair number of off-screen deaths, and I'm going to do my best to actually rate what I can. We learn when the movie starts that the children of Elm Street no longer fear Freddy and that has resulted in him losing his fear-based powers. So Freddy's plan is to let Jason out of hell so he can go kill in Sprigwood, hoping everybody would actually bring that fear back that they had for Freddy Krueger thinking Freddy was doing the killing. And this in turn would actually give Freddy his powers back. The first kill in this movie is a little girl and she was killed by Freddy. It was off screen so we're not going to rate that one. Heather is the first on-screen kill. She was taking a skinny dip in the lake and she was waiting for her boyfriend. He hasn't shown up so she starts to get scared. She gets out of the lake and as she's looking around, she turns and sees Jason walking towards her so she takes off running. And we get a common uh, slasher trope where the victim trips for no reason and falls onto the ground. Well, she gets back up and then she backs into a tree thinking it's Jason. She's a little relieved for a second. Again, another common trope. Then she does back up again, and she backs up into Jason. As soon as she turns around, Jason impales her to a tree with his machete. This first kill was very by-the-numbers slasher affair with the victim tripping and turning around just in time to get killed. And this makes sense. This, this kill was a fabrication by Freddy to get Jason to kill. However, I'm still going to ward Heather one nail in the coffin. After she tripped, she should have kept running not to stop to look around because she really wasn't hurt after she fell and there was no reason for her to stop she could have kept running and never back up in a horror movie you're always going to walk into death so for the first kill in this movie heather you're going to get one now in the coffin resident asshole trey is next he and gib just finished having sex and of course we all know that's a trigger for jason he's lying in bed while gib is in the shower he rolls over to the side of the bed to get a beer and then when he rolls back there's jason Jason takes his machete and impales Trey multiple times going all the way through Trey and even through the bottom of the bed. After Jason is done uh, stabbing Trey a bunch, he takes either side of the bed and folds it in half, killing Trey in a vicious manner that is yet still somewhat satisfying since I really didn't like this character. But I'm going to give Trey two nouns in a coffin and Jason must still have some of his teleportating tricks since he got kind of appeared out of nowhere. You know, how do you get in the house? How do you get in the room? And when we, when Trey saw Jason, he actually tried to get out of the bed really fast, but Jason was too quick, and he stared the hell out of him and then folded him in half. I didn't like Trey at all, but I didn't see anything that he did that was necessarily stupid that led to his death. Just being an asshole doesn't really mean I'm going to, you know, take points away and give you less nails. But him being a meathead douche doesn't necessarily lead to him getting killed. So, Trey, you're going to get two nails in a coffin, you jerk. Trey's best friend, Blake, is sitting on a porch mourning the death of his friend. Blake fell asleep on a porch and he has a dream where he encounters Freddy in the middle of the road. Freddy tries to kill him, but it didn't work since Freddy's just not strong enough yet. So, Freddy let Jason go have some fun. Blake wakes up and finds that his dad had lost his head and it lands into his lap. When he gets up, there's Jason who hacks him to death with his machete. I'm going to give Blake two nails in a coffin. He had a normal reaction when he saw his dad's head fall into his lap. And we didn't see how his dad got killed, so I'm not going to rate that death. But when Blake saw Jason, he did have a reaction that you would expect. He kind of froze, and he did actually flinch when Jason raised up the machete to swipe at him. But 
Blake didn't really have much time to get away. And considering he just woke up from a nightmare, he was in shock at his dad, I'm going to give Blake two nails in the coffin. Trey's girlfriend, Gib, is still despondent from the loss of her a boyfriend. She's drinking at a rave that's being held in a cornfield. She's walking around and she thinks she sees Trey in the field and she follows him into this corn silo. She's actually laying on the ground, passed out, and having a dream. A piece of crap raver named Frizzell saw her stumbling and followed her. He's now laying on top of her trying to sexually assault her. In Gibbs dream, she sees Freddy um, in this corn silo, which now looks like a boiler room because it's Freddy Krueger, and she's trying to get away with him. She backs up and falls over a catwalk, lands in some lockers, and she decides to hide inside one of the lockers. Of course, this is Freddy's dream. He knows exactly where she's at, and he appears, and he's about to kill her, but before he can... He sees her chest cave in because Jason had killed her first. Jason was at this rave and he had impaled Gib and Frizzell with the broken pipe and he tosses Frizzell <laughs> through the air and this actually pisses Freddy off since Jason stole his kill. I'm going to award Gib three nails in a coffin. Even though she was in dream, when she saw Freddy, she knew enough to get the hell you know, out of there and get away from this monster. She tried to get away, but you know she was in a dream controlled by Freddy, so her fate was pretty much sealed. Even after she fell off the catwalk, she pulled herself up and at least tried to hide in a locker. She couldn't get out of this, you know, corn silo slash boiler room since Freddy had sealed off all the exits. And I really didn't see anything from Gib that would cause her not to get at least three nails in a coffin. You know, she knew enough to try and get away from Freddy. And I can't really blame her since it was a dream controlled by Freddy. So, Gib, I'm going to give you three nails in a coffin. Now, for Zell, you deserved your fate. And you deserve zero nails in the coffin. This crap bag was laying on top of a passed out Gib trying to sexually assault her. His actions directly resulted in him being killed because if he wasn't trying to lie on top of this passed out young woman, you know, trying to assault her, he wouldn't have been killed when Jason showed up. So F him. I'm glad he's dead. Zero nails in the coffin. <laughs> Jason is now loose in the cornfield, and he approaches Shaq and his buddy, who are both getting high and they're drunk. When Shaq and his friend see Jason, they start insulting him. Jason takes this guy's head and spins it around backwards, killing him instantly. I'm going to give Shaq's friend, who's only referred to as teammate, I'm going to give him two nails in a coffin. He probably had no clue who Jason was. He and Shaq thought that Jason was someone dressed up for a costume party. I'm not really going to take points away from them being drunk and high at a rave since that's pretty much what you do. And they didn't think they were going to be in danger. So I'm going to give teammate, which is what he's referred to as two nails in a coffin. After Shaq sees his buddy get killed, he takes the Everclear he had in a pitcher and throws it on Jason. He then sets him on fire with a torch. Well, he says this has no effect on Jason, so he takes off running through the cornfield. When he gets to the opening where the rest of the rave is, Jason had thrown his flaming machete through the air, and it goes into Shaq's back and coming out his chest, killing him. I'm going to give Shaq three nails in the coffin. He saw his friend get killed, and then he right away, he's like, hey, let me set this guy on fire who just killed my friend. He didn't freeze, and he only ran when he saw setting Jason on fire had zero effect on him. At least he did something, and that goes a long way in this franchise. I was on the face with two or three nails, but he just squeaked out getting three nails in a coffin. Everybody at the rave see Shaq getting killed, and then they see this giant fire Jason. And this is something that kind of bugs me in horror movies when there's a crowd of people and they see some form of danger. Everybody starts to run, but they're all running a different direction, passing by other people, knocking them down, running the other way. Like, nobody knows really where to go. I was able to count five on-screen raver deaths, and they're not actually named, so I'm just going to give each of them a number in the order that they died. Raver 1, he was killed when he has a keg over his head, and he's about to throw it at Fire Jason, but before he can, Jason slashes him with his machete. Raver 1, at least he tried something, so I'm going to give him two nails in the coffin. Raver 2, he was just standing there watching when Jason slashed him across the chest and he did nothing, didn't run or anything, so I'm going to give him one nail in the coffin. Raver 3 was throwing beer on Fire Jason and I guess it was an effort to slow him down or something. Yeah, you guessed it. This moron is going to get one nail in the coffin. Raver 4, another person who was just standing there as Jason impaled him in the stomach with his machete, so he's going to get one nail in the coffin. 
Now, Raver 5 looked as though he was trying to protect the young lady that was behind him before Jason killed him. Now, in this franchise, that is going to get you a long way since he did kind of, you know, block Jason from getting to his girl. I'm going to give him three nails in a coffin. I'm assuming he was protecting his girlfriend, and that's always going to win points with me, and I'm going to give Raver number five three nails in a coffin because he was trying to protect somebody. Mark is Jason's next victim to get nailed. Unfortunately for him, Freddy now has his powers back. Mark is in his bathroom attempting to take some caffeine pills so he can stay awake. But when he closes the medicine cabinet, he sees Freddy. Mark then turns around and he sees his dead older brother in the tub. So now he knows he's asleep and that's not good news. Freddy wants Mark to send a message to everybody that he's back so they can build a fear. But Mark won't do it. So Freddy sets him on fire and he slashes his face with his glove. And when Lori and Will see Mark, he has a message from Freddy burnt into his back. Get it? We didn't see how Mark fell asleep, and I don't know how hard he actually tried to stay awake, but when we see him, he was sitting down at his desk in a dimly lit room, and he did stand up to Freddy when Freddy wanted to, him to leave a message. And because of that, I'm not going to give him one now, so he just edged out with two nails in a coffin. Freddy doesn't have a lot of kills in this movie, and this was the only on-screen one that I was able to nail for now. A short while later, their group of kids are at the Weston Hills Psychiatric Hospital to get some hypnosil, which, if you remember correctly, suppresses dreams. Uh, one of the security guards named Stafford uh, hears banging on one of the metal doors, and he sees it kind of, you know, shaking. He's approaching with his gun drawn. The scene then switches for a moment, and then when we next see Stafford, his body is laying underneath the door. Jason had busted it down and killed the security guard. We didn't actually see the death blow, but you can pretty much tell what happened here. And I'm going to give the security guard Stafford two nails in a coffin. He couldn't have known a super strong killing machine would be on the other side of the metal door. Strong enough to break the board down with enough force to squish him. Stafford had his gun drawn since he knew there was danger on the other side. I don't know if he had called in for backup or anything, but that probably wouldn't have changed his fate anyways. And he was doing his job as security officer, so that's going to earn him at least two nails in the coffin. Deputy Stubbs is in a control room in the hospital with Charlie. They're watching Freeberg pour all the hypnosil down a drain. Freeberg got high, and since he's a discount Jay from Jay and Silent Bob, this allowed Freddy to possess him. Jason appears in a control room, still using his teleportation powers, and he takes a swing with his machete hitting the control panel. This causes Jason to become electrocuted. Stubbs tries to get by Jason, but Jason's able to grab him, and Stubbs is electrocuted and dies. I'm going to award Stubbs one nail in a coffin. He got way too close to Jason when he had all that electricity going through him. He had space to get out of the room, not getting so close to Jason that he was within arm's length, and he didn't need to get that close, so that was stupid, and that's why he's only going to get one nail in the coffin. If you're trying to not fall asleep since a dream demon monster will has a chance to kill you, why would you get high? Of course, that's what Freeberg did, and he dozed off, and Freddy was able to take over his body. Once Freddy took him over, he had Freeberg dump all the hypnocell down a drain. Now, Freddy wants to kill Jason. He's mad because Jason is stealing his kills. So, in Freeberg's body, he has Freeberg load two large syringes with tranquilizers, and he's then waiting for Jason in the hallway. When Jason gets up to him, Freddy Berg injects Jason with the tranquilizers, and it does knock Jason out, because if Jason is sleeping, Freddy can, you know, pull him into his dream world. But before Jason does go down, he's able to take his machete and slice Freeberg in half, killing him. Now, for Freeberg, I'm going to kill him one nail in the coffin. He was stupid to get high when you're trying to stay awake. And, yeah, he was just a stupid character this whole movie. He made no sense. He was a discount Jay from Jay and Silent Bob that didn't work. Dumb decisions getting high like that. So, Freeberg, you're going to get one nail in the coffin. Jason is now knocked out. And this Scooby gang wants to take Jason to Crystal Lake so he can have home field advantage, I guess. Now, so now Lori, Will, and Charlie are all in a cabin by the lake. Lori is unconscious, having a nightmare involving Freddy. Jason arrives, and he's standing over Lori. Charlie takes a flagpole, and he tries to stab Jason with them, lightly kind of tapping with them. He wants to save Lori, but Jason is able to knock him across the room, and his back gets impaled on a shelf bracket. 
Kia helps him out of the cabin and she places him down against a tree to go try and get some help, I imagine. But after she leaves, Charlie does pass away from his wounds. Charlie showed some bravery at the end before he died and he really didn't show any really other bravery during the length of this movie. So I'm just going to barely give him two nails in a coffin. Yes, he was trying to save his friend Lori, but he took the flagpole and it's like he was just like tapping him. He really wasn't even trying anything. It was, yeah, bed writing in this movie at some point. So because of Charlie, you know, your actions, I'm only going to be able to squeak you out just two nails in the coffin. Well, we get what everybody's been waiting for, the final battle between Freddy and Jason. This last part of the movie is great, and it's really the only part of the movie I enjoy. It's a great fight with lots of back and forth between Jason and Freddy. Jason gets the upper hand first, tossing Freddy around the cabin, which is, of course, built on fire. And he beats the crap out of him, dragging him across all the windows, you know, throwing him around, and then he eventually throws him from one cabin to another. During this end battle, we get our final death in the movie. Freddy is about to go for Lori and Will until Kia calls his name. He starts looking back and forth between Lori and Will and Kia, and he decides, hey, let me go for Kia. She starts antagonizing him, calling him names and whatnot, and when she's talking all of her smack to Freddy, con you know, constantly insulting him, Freddy notions for her to turn around. And as soon as she does, just in time to see Jason, who strikes her with her machete, which sends her flying against a tree, killing her. I'm going to give Kia two nails in a coffin. She did try and save her friends, but the way she went about it was all wrong. I don't think it was smart to talk crap to an unkillable dream demon, throw in insult at him. And, you know, she was distracted. I guess she forgot that Jason was there also, because as soon as she turned around, she was killed by Jason. I'm going to go down the middle on this one because she did show some bravery and stupidity at the same time and give her two nails in a coffin. And sometimes with the slasher, there is a pretty thin line between bravery and stupidity in movies like this. I don't want to show you the whole fight between Freddy and Jason because you really need to watch the ending of this movie to get the full effect on how awesome the ending of this is. But there's more back and forth between the two with Freddy getting the upper hand for a while. Then they eventually wind up on the dock, which is on fire thanks to Laurie and Will. An explosion then blows Freddy and Jason into the lake. When Lori and Will are recovering from the explosion, Freddy is about to kill them, but Jason shows up out of nowhere and he impales Freddy with his own arm, which Jason had removed earlier. After Jason does this, he falls back into the lake. This gives Lori enough time to grab the machete and she has some lures with him and she decapitates him. A short while later, at the end of the movie, we see Jason walking out of the lake carrying Freddy's head and as the movie ends, we see Freddy give a nice little wink to the camera. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The rolls are all mine. Nails in a coffin for Freddy vs. Jason. Here's a summary of all the nails I've awarded. Here's a summary of the average nails in a coffin for all the Friday the 13th movies that I've covered so far. I don't think we get a clear winner here since you can call it both ways, you can call it a tie, but when the movie first came out, I was Team Jason and I still am. Let me know who you think won in the comments down below. I'd love to hear if you think Freddy or Jason won or if it was a tie. But definitely be sure to come back here next week for the final Nails in a Coffin before the Golden Ale Awards with 2009's remake of Friday the 13th. And it looks like I'm not going to hear Jason for now. That's great. So I'll see you guys. Thanks, everybody. Take care.